three very interesting features of special relativity that don't appear in classical physics are length contraction, time dilation, and the constancy of the speed of light. However, using our everyday intuition, we may be able to think up some situations that seem to show that these fundamental characteristics of special relativity disagree either with reality or other parts of the theory itself. If we're to take special relativity serious at all, we have to come up with concrete resolutions to these quote-unquote paradoxes. In the process, we'll see that the issue is not with special relativity, but instead with our intuition. The first paradox that I want to talk about arises from length contraction. Say that Isaac is standing by some train tracks that go through a tunnel, and Albert is on a very fast train which goes through this tunnel. We know from length contraction that if Isaac and Albert measure both the length of the train and the length of the tunnel, that they'll get different answers. Specifically, Isaac will measure the train to be shorter and the tunnel to be longer than Albert does. This isn't really a problem though, since we know that the two reference frames are related by a Lorentz transformation and therefore the underlying laws of physics aren't changing. But here's where the paradox comes in. Say Isaac rigs two guillotines to a switch and puts one at the entrance of the tunnel and one at the exit. Now, say the train is traveling just fast enough that Isaac measures the length of the train and the length of the tunnel to be exactly the same. When the train goes through the tunnel, Isaac flips the switch and the guillotines fall and come back up as soon as the train is completely inside the tunnel. Since the train and the tunnel are the same length, the guillotines miss the train and it carries on unscathed. Now, in Albert's frame, not only is the tunnel shorter, but the train is longer. This spells disaster. When the train goes through the tunnel and the guillotines come down, they'll no longer miss the train and it will get cut up. But how can the train be chopped up in one reference frame and completely fine in another? Well, the answer is that it can't, and we just made a bad assumption. To see this, let's start by drawing a space-time diagram for Isaac, where the spatial coordinate parallel to the train tracks, call it delta xi, will be plotted on the horizontal axis, and the time coordinate, call it delta ti times the speed of light c, will be plotted on the vertical axis. The purpose of multiplying by c is just so that light will travel along lines with a slope of 1 instead of 1 divided by c, which is quite small in everyday units. On this plot, lines of constant time in Isaac's frame will be horizontal lines and vertical lines will be fixed spatial points. Now, on this diagram, we can plot where and when the two guillotines fall as points at the same value of delta ti, but separated in delta xi. To relate this to what Albert sees, we know that we have to use the Lorentz transformation. So let's use this to draw a space-time diagram for Albert in Isaac's coordinates. Let's call Albert's spatial coordinate delta xa and his time coordinate delta ta. Now, if we want to find lines of constant time in Albert's frame, we simply plug delta ta equal to a constant into the Lorentz transformation and solve for c delta ti. What we find is that lines of constant time in Albert's frame are actually slanted with a slope of v divided by c in Isaac's coordinates. Similarly, we can plug in delta xa equal to a constant and again solve for c delta ti. Now we find that fixed spatial points, according to Albert, are again slanted lines in Isaac's coordinates, this time with slope c divided by v. So, if we plot Albert's space-time diagram in Isaac's coordinates, we see that the axes to Albert's diagram are pinched inwards. Let's get back to the problem at hand and put the points on Isaac's diagram which correspond to the guillotines. Now let's overlay Albert's diagram so that the two share a common origin. Now we see something interesting. We can trace the points along lines of constant time in Albert's frame back to the delta ta axis, and we see that, according to Albert, the guillotines don't fall at the same time. 
In fact, the guillotine at the exit of the tunnel falls before the one at the entrance, so the train can make it through without a problem. We've successfully resolved the paradox and found out an interesting new feature of special relativity. Two events which occur at the same time according to one observer can occur at two different times to another observer. This result is known as the relativity of simultaneity. We may have found a satisfying resolution to this seeming paradox, but special relativity isn't out of the woods quite yet, since there is still some more paradoxes that seem to come up in the theory, which I'll address in future videos. In my last video, I derived an expression for the Lorentz transformation, which takes the physics in one frame and expresses it in a second frame moving relative to the first. However, I only did it for a specific case where the direction of motion is along a particular axis, and the axes of the two frames were also aligned. So naturally, I asked the question of whether or not we need a more general Lorentz transformation if the direction of motion is not along a single axis, or if the two axes of our frames are not aligned. As it turns out, the answer lies in the space-time invariant, delta s squared. Since this quantity does not change, it encodes all of the information about the symmetries of Minkowski space. These three terms here make up the invariant for three-dimensional Euclidean space, which doesn't change under rotations. Since nothing is different when we rotate the axes of the different reference frames, we will always be able to line both x-axes with the direction of motion, and so we don't need a more general Lorentz transformation after all. This is a fantastic example as to how we can utilize symmetry to greatly simplify a problem, since a more general Lorentz transformation would be much more difficult to derive and much messier to actually work with. So keep this in mind since symmetry tricks like this show up again and again in physics to make difficult problems that much easier to solve.